Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for less existential crises next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Tubi from Near Automata, a living existential crisis in a perpetual war with no greater purpose. The game's really fun though, bunch of pretty robots, seamless gameplay shifts kinda helps you push through all the dread. Not really, but you should play it. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a sword to hack away. Not like how Nines hacks, that's a different hacking. Next, we'll get a robot buddy that can just spam bullets endlessly. Finally, we need to dodge. Better than I do in the footage, I'm not good at video games. You should know that by now. Thankfully, I am good at transitioning to sponsors, and this video is sponsored by Magi Knights. It's a Sentai and Magical Girl inspired role playing game compatible with 5e. Players can create their own 90s high school student with their own secret Sentai or Magical Girl alter ego. You can forge bonds with your fellow players or NPCs to get spectacular combat abilities or social skills for when you're not battling horrifying monsters. Oh, and there are monsters. The spectral outsiders are these Cthulhu-esque monsters trying to take over your town, even enlisting the help of some of your peers. You never know who you can trust. But you can trust your DM, who's going to be a little more involved in the game as a herald, a mentor figure that's either a magical person or a magical talking animal. I'd go for the magical talking animal. Definitely go for the magical talking animal. I don't want to tell you how to play the game, but definitely go for the talking little animal. The Kickstarter goes live today, so click the link in the description to get started on your Sentai Magical Girl adventure with Magi Knights. Now, back to the video. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook, or for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity will be number one. To be as fast and does not wear heavy armor, I would guess the stockings don't weigh too much anyway. Intelligence next, your brain is a wonder of future tech and your weapons are all pretty fancy. Constitution after that, you're made of the hardest steel in the world, or in space. Follow that with strength. Dexterity is important, but it's not like Tubi is a pushover. Charisma is a bit low. Tubi is hot, but not the best conversationalist. There is a big difference between being hot and talk good. We'll dump wisdom, though. Insight checks are a bit of an issue. A really depressing issue. Tubi is a robot or an android or a cyborg. I don't care, but if you want to tell me so you feel like a smart person, go ahead. Warforged get plus two constitution and plus one dexterity if those are the stats you're looking for. Your constructed resilience gives you resistance to poison damage damage advantage on saves against being poisoned, and you don't need to eat, drink, breathe, or sleep. Instead, you can take a sentry's rest, letting you get the benefits of a long rest by standing still for four hours, in space, or next to a vending machine. Integrated protection lets you merge with a set of armor and give it plus one to its AC. You do have to be proficient with the armor, so we'll pick some specific stuff later. Grab medicine for your skill of choice and the athlete background for athletics and acrobatics. We need those skills and can't get them from our starting class. That starting class being Artificer, letting us grab two skills from the artificer list like investigation and perception so you can always notice what's going on on the surface at least you're a magical tinkerer letting you put tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical items little static things puffs of smoke and the like we're here for cantrips like thorn whip letting you make a melee spell attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage and pulls a creature 10 feet closer to you technically this should be for your pod but if the pod is always over your shoulder it works for me message lets you whisper to a creature within 120 feet of you and they can whisper back so you can always chat with nines when you're on a mission for first level spells, Featherfall prevents up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage for a little pod hover. Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier to a creature you touch, and you can touch yourself, you just probably don't need to tell me about it. Second level artificers get infusions, special things that make you better than the humans you're protecting. Like Homunculus Servant, that'll give you a pod, a little flying buddy that you can command with your bonus action, makes ranged attacks that deal little force damage. It's not quite the spam I want, but we're gonna get there. Enhanced Weapon gives a weapon plus one to attack and damage rolls, and makes it magic in terms of overcoming resistances, now you don't have to worry about carving through thick robot hides. Sending stones make two rocky talkies you can cast sending between for a message with a much longer range. Enhanced defense lets you add one to the AC of a set of armor, which means plus two, pairing it with integrated protection. Third level artificers can choose a specialty, and we're not going battlesmith because the homunculus servant gives us a tiny buddy who can fly and shoot ranged attacks, but the steel defender does not fly, it's medium-sized, and only uses melee attacks. Homunculus servant is just 
just better for what we need, not in general. It has like no HP. So to make the servant better, we'll go for the Armorer Artificer, giving you the spell Magic Missile. That lets you fire three darts of force to deal 1d4 plus one force damage each. Only you can shoot those out right now, not the homunculus pod. Dang, I guess I'm terrible at this. Heroism gets some auto healing going, making a creature immune to frightening and giving them a number of temporary HP equal to your intelligence modifier every round. You can also choose an armor model. I think infiltrator works best for you, adding five feet to your movement speed and giving you advantage on stealth checks, unless you're using heavy armor, then it just gets rid of the disadvantage on stealth checks. You also get a lightning launcher with that, which is cool, but it's not as cool as the sword. Imagine picking armor just for the spells. What a wild idea. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement. Start with dexterity that will help you hack and slash and boost your AC if you're rocking studded leather, which we will. That way you can still have advantage on stealth checks. Not that 2B is generally all that stealthy, but you know, no reason not to. And reasons to do later. Fifth level armorers get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action. That means you can hack and slash and still use your bonus action to command your pod to spam. You can also learn second level spells from the armorer list. Mirror image creates three illusory duplicates of yourself that can take a hit for you. If someone tries to hit you, roll a d20. On a six or higher, they hit a duplicate when you have three left, eight or higher for two, and 11 or higher with only one left. It's like having auto dodge on. Since it's not concentration, you can pair with blur, which gives creatures attacking you disadvantage on their roll. It all pairs with your AC to help you live through the bullet hell. Six level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency bonus for tools you're proficient with. That's thieves, tinkerers, and smiths. But the real buff is two more infusions, like spell refueling ring to recover one spell slot of third level or lower once per day. Obviously, it's more useful when you have third level slots. Returning weapon adds one to a weapon's attack and damage rolls, and when you throw it, it will return to you. If you want to do the cool sword yeeting combo, you have to use a dagger. I'm so sorry, but at least it will deal a bit more damage now. Some of the artificers get flash of genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to the ability check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you and amount of times heard long rest equal to your intelligence modifier. You can flash yourself or flash your friends. Just make sure they're okay being flashed. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement. Cap off your dexterity to make sure your swords are as sharp as possible. Ninth level artificers can learn third level spells like haste, doubling your movement speed, adding two to your AC, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, or make one more attack. That would be 21 base AC with integrated protection and enhanced defense, though that is one of the infusions you'd have to use. Thankfully, this is also the level that armorers get armor modification, letting you infuse two more items per day as long as they're part of your armor. And your armor counts as separate pieces in terms of what can be infused. Boots, a chest piece, gauntlets, a helm, and a weapon specifically. That gets to be more important at the 10th level of Artificer when you become a magical item adept, allowing you to attune up to four magical items at once and you get two more infusions. Helm of Awareness will give you advantage on initiative rolls and you can't be surprised when you're awake. Some characters have their head on a metaphorical swivel, but for 2B, it's literal. Boots of Striding and Springing triple your jump distance for some giant anime hops, and Featherfall will make sure that you're not breaking your metal knees when you land. This level also buffs enhanced weapon and enhanced defense boosts to plus two rather than plus one, so those are still great options. 11th level Artificer is what we were pushing for with Spell Storing Item. That lets you put an Artificer spell of first or second level into an item, then another creature can cast that spell through that item, an amount of times per long rest equal to double your intelligence modifier. If you put Magic Missile into an object, hand that object to your homunculus servant, now you've got some real pod spam. But we need more intelligence for more shots of that, so hit the 12th level of Artificer for an ability score improvement and bump your intelligence up. Every time you boost the modifier, it's two more castings of Magic Missile. Currently, we're at six. That's six rounds of three auto hit rounds per round, so 18 total. It's not a ton of damage, but the pod doesn't do a ton of damage, so it's fine. Now we need to blow up and act like we don't know nobody. So we're gonna jump to Wizard, which will eventually let us do that. For now, grab three more cantrips, like Booming Blade, which lets you make a melee weapon attack that deals an extra 2d8 thunder damage. And if the creature you hit moves on their turn, they take an additional 3d8 thunder damage. It's a little slow, but it hits harder. It's a very strong attack. Light lets you see in the dark with your bad warforged eyes, and Sword Burst forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures within five feet of you, dealing 3d6 force damage to those that fail. There isn't an official way to make your sword spin all around all over the place, but this kind of does that. For first level spells, jump triples your jump distance. Long Strider lets you run 10 feet faster. Basic mobility buffs for a very mobile gal. Identify tells you what a magical item does and how many charges it has left. Detect magic lets you sense magical auras and what type of magic causes them so your pod can do some scanning. Find familiar summons a small animal that can't make attacks, but it could conceivably use your spell storing item to spam magic missile if you don't want to use the homunculus servant for some reason. Probably because it died. 
type doesn't have a lot of HP. And Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet, half damage and no pushing if they succeed. The damage of first level spells doesn't scale that well, but if you want a big hammer for your pod, this is the best way to do it. Second level wizards can choose a school, and if you want to fight really fast with a one-handed weapon and not wear a lot of clothing, Blade Singer is great. With this, you can activate a Blade Song, adding your intelligence modifier to your AC and concentration checks, 10 feet to your movement speed, and giving you advantage on acrobatics checks. It's a lot, but you can't be wearing heavy armor or a shield. That's why we have to merge with studded leather. Unfortunately, that does mean that your AC will only be 25 with haste and integrated protection as opposed to plate mail, which would be 23. I guess that's better, because people are going to tell me she has to merge with the heavy armor anyway. We don't need any spells at this level. Honestly, we don't really need any second level spells either. We're just on a path to self-destruction. So third level wizards get second level spells. I give enhance ability to characters I don't have other second level spells for. That gives a creature advantage on ability checks of a certain type. Strength also doubles their carrying capacity. Dexterity lets them ignore falling damage from heights up 20 feet or less. And constitution gives them 2d6 temporary HP. But yeah, you have other concentration options that are better. Fourth level wizards get another ability score improvement. Keep pushing that intelligence up for more magic missile spam, more AC with a blade song, harder to avoid spells, just like everything. Intelligence does so much for you. Obviously, you gotta download the big brain. Just remember that knowledge is a curse and becoming more powerful just means you know more about the horrors of your own existence. Fifth level wizards get third level spells and I figured out how to self-destruct. I thought about going for contingency, but that only lets you cast a spell that targets yourself, not other creatures. Spell storing item doesn't work because it requires an action to cast. Glyph of warding doesn't work because if the glyph moves more than 10 feet, it goes off. So how the hell do you self-destruct? It's actually really easy. Cast the spell Fireball at your feet. It's a 20 foot radius sphere that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, have as much to those that succeed. Since he should have a bunch of higher level spell slots from multi-class and casters, upcast it and add an extra d6 of damage per spell level. That's a big old kaboom. I don't know why you would shoot it at your feet and try to die, but actually after playing near, no, I kind of get it. Anyway, Blink sets up another auto dodge, letting you blink in and out of the material plane at the end of your turn. Roll a d20 on an 11 or higher, you spend your time between turns in the border ethereal plane and can't be hit by anyone on the material plane. Like mirror image, it's not concentration, so you can pair them together to be a monster to hit. Even worse, considering your absurdly high AC. Six level blade singers get extra attack, but again, unfortunately, it doesn't stack with extra attack from armor. But wait, blade singer extra attack just hits different. That's because you can replace one attack with a cantrip. Booming blade lets you replace that cantrip with an attack that deals an extra 3d8 thunder damage at this point and also explodes the creature if they move. And with haste, that's three attacks per round, followed by some homunculus spam as your bonus action. We don't need any more spells at this point to be as a god. Seventh level blade singers can learn fourth level spells. I guess stone skin gives you some metal skin, letting you resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour depending on your concentration. Save the slots for bigger kabooms. Haste is better since it makes you pretty much impossible to hit. Also, most late game enemies have magic weapons, which will go through stone skin. So yeah, just use haste. Our capstone is the eighth level of wizard for one last ability score improvement. Cap off your intelligence to become a fully broken robot girl. And by broken, I mean very high functioning. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, with haste, blade song, and enhanced defense, integrated protection, all that jazz, your base AC is 26. You can cast shield as a reaction for 31. Mix in mirror image, and you have three clones that they might hit instead. Mix in blink, and you're only there half the time anyway, so nobody gets to hit you. Your combo game is also great, with a booming blade, followed by an extra attack, followed by a hasted attack, followed by a free magic missile from your pot. That's 3d6 plus 21 magical slashing damage, 3d8 thunder damage, and 3d4 plus 3 force damage, or around 51 with median rolls, a very consistent combo. Finally, you're fast with 110 feet of movement speed after long strider, blade song, infiltrator armor, and haste. For weaknesses, flying all those buffs can take some time, so you might not actually get to use them all. Your homunculus also only has 18 HP and 13 AC, so shooting it down won't be hard for the baddies. Finally, your HP isn't great as a frontline fighter, around 135 depending on how you rolled, so someone who can hit you could mess you up. It's a good thing that nobody can hit you then. You're fast, dodge automatically, and have a buddy who will spam lasers. Just focus on the job and do violence. There's no time to worry about existential dread if you're working nines to five. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Huntress from The Birds of Prey, Leela from Futurama, Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog, or Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z. Sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.